I was. I, I've gone over all the examples he gave us. Yeah, as well. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's what he's going to be. If it's uh, if it's gonna be that one, we'll going. Yeah. You also get the messages on your portal where you have to change your password. Uh, yeah, but that's not usually until October, though. I've been ignoring mine, so it keeps on yelling at me. <laughs> I keep on clicking and waiting later. I've I've been ignoring mine to the point that it's now like no, I like think it's locked out parts of Canvas, oh, not Canvas, but like yeah, yeah, the portal, page, yeah. Until I do it. What does it? What does it lock out? Is it anything important? I'm sure if I tried to go and like register for classes, I haven't tried really anything. It's just that that whole page is now blank. Mm -hmm. okay. It's such a pain in the ass to change it too, because I forget which one it is. Yeah. Yeah, they make us do it in, in October. Wait, yeah, that's annoying. Make us do all the they make us do all these mandatory like safety Title IX training too. Yeah, we have to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like they say no, don't do it. And they're like, yeah. Common sense. Yeah. Common, common sense. Who knows this? Sense. They're all common sense, but those trainings are never for like you. They're for the it, management, just so that if something happens, they're like, oh, we gave them training. It's yeah, not our fault. Yeah. You know. It's a, it's a, it's not my fault. We, yeah. have, we, we told them not to do it. Yeah. They're always a pain in the ass. I found out recently that like a lot of, a lot of managers, they like a lot of their pay gets, based on how what percentage of like students and students finish those trainings. Mm. So now I just don't do it until they <laughs> until they like lock me out of everything. <laughs> well, so they, I mean, they put a hold on our accounts. Oh yeah. Classes. I know. So like, well, yeah, hey, question. when how do we uh when do we have to apply for graduation? Uh you can apply for graduation up to a year in advance. Okay. And so if you're if you're if and you're if you're on track for spring 2025, you can you can apply now. I'm on track for fall 20. Okay. You can probably do it probably over summer. I think. Yeah. And then does it just give you priority in registration kind of? It does. Yeah. Only for your last semester though. Like, um do you have to apply before you like you graduate or yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because it's uh there's there's a lot of paperwork we have to do. Um uh, kind of like checking off with different departments that it's all well, everything's all good. Okay. So yeah. I was meaning to ask you, but I never got around to it. plan for today since we're done with uh today's a fun day so these are these are some slides it's you know i don't i don't test you on this these things at all but yeah. um these are slides that are given to me by someone in the business school actually so um it's about entrepreneurship entrepreneurial thinking um so there there's a there's a push from the call from the college level to like encourage more and more of this just in general um, and, and it doesn't really fit into any other class except for this one so Oh yeah, and my brother was mentioned this the other day. The new building that apparently they've got enough funding for it. Where is it going? It's going. Um, you know where the picnic tables are, kind of like in between, like kind of behind the engineering building, like on the way to main campus. Like not this building, but the one over yeah. behind there. Behind there, yeah. Yeah, is it just going to be three buildings in a row now? So Pretty much taking away part of the part the path. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Because my brother thought it would be, you know, where the uh, E twenty one is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He thought they would be taking all those buildings away and part of the parking lot and having it over there. And I think that would make more sense as well. Though. That's that's the longer term plan. So they're gonna they're doing this in phases. So um, the first the first phase, it's a building that's just primarily research space, yeah. and so that's going to be in that kind of that you know right behind engineering. So we have three buildings in a row. Okay. And then and then the next phase is going to do more classrooms, which is going to take up that that space. Okay. There. And I'm assuming this won't be done before like. 2100. No, you will, you will never see it. <laughs> I think I'll be dead twice over by the time. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have kids, they're going to show up and they'll be like, we're breaking ground finally. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I send my kids to Fullerton and their kids will go to Fullerton and then finally they'll be like, hey, the building's here now. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's, that's how these things go, though. Biggest fear is that they find a way to like preserve you in a jar, and that my kids are like, "Yeah, this is what he would have wanted," and then I'm stuck to turn on the right <laughs> jar. Bro. They use you as a problem. Yeah, they're like, "Look at Grandpa, eternally <laughs> preserved on the fireplace mantle." <laughs> where you just like, where you like, you know, uh, 
what's it called, the future hour or something like that, where they like the people in the brain where you like actually like sentient the entire time, bro. They're just eternal purgatory stuck on the fireplace. <laughs> Worse, dying at dying at work, and you find out that ghosts are real, and now you're stuck at work for the rest of your life. <laughs> Probably turning to your haunting or where you used to work. Actually, I was gonna. I thought you were gonna say you get stuck in a brain jar at work and forced to work. <laughs> you're like, you're about to feel like free, like, yeah. yeah. Kids sell you off. You're like, how much is Grandpa worth? He was an engineer back in his day. So, uh, off to the research and development. But yeah, that's my that's my big concern. Yeah, they find out how to do that, and I'm stuck in a brain jar. My, that's my irrational fear, though. Now I'm sharp. There's eternal purgatory and brain jar. Most of the is how it might be installed in services. Oh, yeah? But I've been jumping out of stuff, man. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's why I don't jump. I joke about jumping out of stuff because I'm not doing that. Yeah, that's interesting. You go on airplanes, though? Yeah, yeah. airplanes are fine. Because airplanes, 99% of the time, stay up. Yeah, unless you're Boeing. <laughs> unless you're unless Boeing. You're, unless it's Boeing. But it's the it's when you're like, oh, we're going to jump out of this perfectly good air. Like, yes, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah, you know. Well, my one thing is like when people have like super irrational fears about flying, that's the one that's like, really? Yeah. You'd rather drive across country than take a plane? I understand like older, like 80, 90 year olds, because they were young when planes were first, but. Like, Oh, do you want to fly on thing? They're like, I don't know. You're flying on some. Get ground on some nice and you should be fine. Stick around the plane. Yeah. But in drill, just. Yeah, it's like it's like a dog. You know how they put the dogs to sleep before they go on the plane? Do they freak out? Like, Grandma, I have this pillow. I want you to stay. Yeah. It's plane's on fire. Just jumping out. Oh, why? What? Yeah, no. jumping, you know, that bridge is totally fine underneath me. My buddy, uh, he's part of the uh, Air Force Academy right now. Okay. And so during their summer training, he had to do uh, para jumping, and then they did para jumping into a week of survival. So they had like three MREs with them. He's yeah. like, yeah, no, this was that was painful. So he had to jump out of the plane, and then they survived in the desert of wherever it is, some like Colorado or something, in the middle of Colorado, nowhere. And then, yeah, so they were stuck with three MREs for a week. Yeah. Uh, one of my high school teachers did when I was in the Air Force and so I'm like a paratrooper. And on one of the jumps, the two guys above him, shoots tangled, and they went through his chute and couldn't deploy in time. So he hit the ground, legs first, shattered both his legs, got out from the head to start at 100%, yeah. went, joined the FBI. Mm -hmm. So he's in. Like four, five grand, uh, no, like close to six grand, just the disability mm -hmm. plus his FBI pay. Interesting. Is it best? I'm assuming the desk job at the FBI. Uh, some I don't know what he does, but he lives in like a Mona. He's got like four houses, three boats, just like a garage full of guns because he has so much money. He's just like you know, it's, 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 between the disability and his pay, it's he's probably bringing four. You know what? I would love to work for DWP. Their pensions are. Yeah. Ever thought working for DWP, Professor? Yeah, I considered it. Yeah. The pension. We get pension here too. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it to the tune of like eighty percent of like one hundred and fifty grand? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if I stay here for fifty years, maybe, but. <laughs> So I know my, my dad had a buddy that was in the DWP and he's like, yeah, so what they do is because they don't want you there for like the people, it's like an unfolded rule. You, you leave after 20 so you get your pension. Uh -huh. So what they do is like your last year, they'll promote you. Yeah. They'll get as much money as possible. Yeah. He's like, yeah, they usually end up with an 80% of 200 grand because that's their final pension. Yeah. you. I think here you have to hold your salary for at least a year or yeah. to account for your pension. DWP, which is usually promoting like the last three years. <laughs> we don't, we don't have that kind of a, Tit for tat thing here, <laughs> but then it's then it's understood that you leave after twenty. Yeah, I see, I see. That's so it. someone else, so someone else gets, gets to else <laughs> get the benefits. There's too many egos in in, in academia for that to happen. Yeah. <laughs>
we all work together, we could all be filthy rich. <laughs> The pensions, like, happened for the last three years. So the last three years before people retired, they're like, I don't want to be in the U.S. at all. If they can leave the combat zone, they better have too much of a Yeah, because they paid the most. Yeah. Even if it's just, like, sitting in the office in the combat zone. Yeah. That was, I got to go to join for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And my paychecks went from 500 bucks to 200 Because we weren't even in the day and a half. It was fantastic. I was like, oh, crap. Sure. Oh, I'll say that again. Actually, my hands are going to have to say. I wouldn't find that. Yeah. All right. It's one o'clock. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. It's our last uh, class before spring break. Um, so today's today's a fun class, and so you know there's no content today. That's probably probably why not so many people are here. Uh, I think I maybe I mentioned on Tuesday. Uh, but glad you guys are here. Glad you guys are uh, with me uh, here today. So how's how's everyone doing today? Doing good. Hanging in there. Excited for spring break. All right. So today, uh, what I have for you is a workshop, actually, or it's, it's more of a set of lecture slides. But there there is kind of a um, kind of an interactive portion of it. Um, and so it's how to think like an entrepreneur, right? Uh, and so I think I, I I mentioned this kind of right before the class, but there there is a push from the college to kind of encourage you know more of this thinking. Um, I think now nowadays more and more people are kind of interested in kind of what it's like to start your own company, um, to kind of you know what that world is like. And as an engineer, you know you have a great you actually have a great basis for for doing that because you know you are going to graduate from here. You're going to have a strong kind of base, a strong kind of foundation of technical skills, technical knowledge, and so you know you have a lot of I would say potential, a lot of uh, tools that you can use to make a new product, take it to market, things like that, right? Um, so we've over the last few years, you know, we've been we've been increasing our partnership with the business school here to kind of provide more of this kind of resources to you guys, and kind of this is this is kind of part of it here today. Okay. Um, but even if you know, even if you don't have interest in, in kind of starting your own company or, or being an entrepreneur or making a new product, things like that, you know, just just kind of this mindset of of you know how to think like an entrepreneur, what they're looking for, um, you know, how they see the world, you know, what, you know, how the how they think. It's it's beneficial for even even you know rank and file you know employees at a at a bigger company as well because I think what you're seeing in the trend nowadays is that a lot of these companies are are valuing this kind of skill set as well, um, and that's that's kind of the one of the main feedbacks that we get from you know talking with our industry partners. So you know kind of a, a lot of that has kind of motivated this 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 kind of um, you know this kind of thinking and this kind of you know and, and motivated the college to provide more of these kinds of opportunities for you. So uh, today's kind of along that that vein. So nothing today, nothing today is going to be, um, you know, um, tested on or anything like that. I'm not going to give you any homework on this. So today is just, you know, it's just for fun. And so it's the last class before spring break. And so I know you guys probably are, are really busy with a lot of other things. You know, we're, we're certainly going to get really busy after the spring break. So, you know, today's kind of just like a break to kind of just have a little bit of fun and, and, and to see what it's like to be an entrepreneur. Okay. Um, so before I get started, though, just an announcement. Remember, homework five is due for you guys on Sunday, so make sure you guys get that done. Um, you know, it's on tax, tax stuff, and and you know, and replacement decisions, and a little bit on inflation too. So uh, make sure you finish that up before Sunday. Okay. <clears throat> and then when we come back on from spring break, you know, uh, originally I had planned for our midterm exam to be the week we come back from spring break, but remember I'm pushing it back, and so the midterm is going to be on Tuesday. Not the week we get back, but the week after the week we get back. So, uh, I think that's week 13. Okay. Yeah, week 13. Okay. Uh, 14, 14, week 14. All right, any questions I can answer before we uh, get started for today? Yeah. Uh, I thought this was week 10. This is week 10. You'll be week 13. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it is week 13. That's what I thought it was in my head, but then I counted somehow I thought this was week 11, so. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, so I guess the first thing we should talk about is, you know, what, what is an entrepreneur? So let's, uh, let's kind of describe that. So when, when I think when people hear the word entrepreneur, I think they think of someone like, uh, I don't know, like a, like a, like a Mark Cuban or something like that. Right. Someone who has, you know, made it, has become extremely rich, you know, making their own companies, you know, kind of revolutionizing the world and, 
being on Shark Tank and owning the Dallas Mavericks and yelling at referees every night, right? That's, I think, that's how people, what people think of as an entrepreneur. Um, and of course, you know, there are some very big ones like that and, and the ones that get really famous, but, you know, on a smaller scale, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of other entrepreneurs that kind of make a product uh, or make a company that, that kind of, um, you know, addresses a certain field that, you know, may not be as widespread, but does still make a very positive impact on the world in their own way. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, with that in mind, you know, people think of entrepreneurs as kind of just purely kind of business people, right? Um, you know, I think that's kind of very most apparent kind of when you're going to school where, you know, you have people who are business majors, they kind of do their thing, they're in the business school, and we're engineers, we're in the engineering school, we kind of do our own thing, right? Uh, but there's actually kind of a lot of overlap and, and entrepreneurship, you know, is not strictly just kind of a business thing. Uh, having business skills does help, but, you know, there's there's a lot that we can learn from entrepreneurs that kind of help make our jobs better and, and make us kind of more valuable uh, to the workforce. Okay? So kind of a broad definition of, of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs in general is that entrepreneurs look at the world as it is, then ask, you know, what could it what it could be or how could it make, make it better? Okay. Um, and so, you know, it's a very broad statement. It sounds very kind of, you know, uh, frou frou kind of like, you know, kind of like a motivational Steve Jobs kind of thing. Uh, but it's important. And so, you know, and there's actually kind of two parts of this, uh, uh, to this statement here, right? So on the one hand, entrepreneurs, you know, they, they observe and they look at the world of, and the state of the world and, and how it is right now, right? That's very important. And so in order to really kind of solve a problem, you really need to understand what the problem is. Um, and so that's that's kind of part of it. And then you know once once a problem is identified, then you can go and, and actually design a solution for it. Okay. So when you put it like that, you know entrepreneurship and engineering actually have a lot of overlap because engineers also you know are looking to uh, to solve you know problems of the world. It's just that they go about it from an engineering mindset rather than kind of a business mindset. Right? But as you can see that, but you know as you will see that there's a lot of overlap between between the two. Okay. So why do it this way, right? So why do I make an emphasis of, you know, observing the world first? Well, if you do it the other way, um, then it can kind of lead to some very disastrous uh, things, okay? Okay, so have you guys seen this device before? It's a segue, right? So back in 2001, um, you know, this guy named Dean, um, Dean Kamen uh, was was the inventor of this, right? And so he, he had kind of uh, was hyping it up for a really long time. And so, you know, and he didn't really tell the world kind of what it was until he actually revealed it. So kind of part of the part of the hype, kind of part, part of the kind of the tease that he gave was that, you know, he said the segue or this invention that he's that he's creating will be to the car what the car was to the horse and buggy. And so he thought it was going to be something revolutionary. Everyone's going to be driving. Everyone's going to be having a, a segue and riding around everywhere. And he had the backing of a lot of very famous people. So Steve Jobs actually was in support of this. He said it's it's actually going to be bigger than the internet, um, and uh, a lot of kind of very big kind of uh, um, you know capital investors kind of said the same thing. Okay, and so they were projecting you know a, a very large success. Right. Um, so in their first year uh, after being released, you know they expected to sell forty thousand units. They expected to sell forty thousand. And they had a few different models. They had kind of a, a, a kind of a, a business model where you know it was kind of more expensive but kind of had more capabilities, and they had a consumer model which was a lot cheaper. I think it was around three thousand um, dollars. Kind of the business model was like eight thousand dollars. So they expected it to take off, and so, um, but you know it's two thousand twenty four, and I think you know we can all agree that the Segway did not really take off. Um, you know I think I think you'd be hard pressed to ask someone randomly on the street you know, when was the last time you saw a Segway. You know, most people probably say like, oh, you know, probably saw one randomly at the mall, like, you know, like, like two months ago or something like that, right? So it clearly, it clearly didn't revolutionize the world and, and not that many people know about it, right? And in fact, you know, it was actually a gigantic, it was not just a failure, it was a catastrophic failure. And so um, they expected to sell 40,000 of these in the first year. Um, well, if you look at the sales from, uh, from like almost a six year period from 2001 to 2007, they only sell 30,000 of these. So it was way, way less than kind of what they had hoped for. Uh, and so, you know, and now, and now at this point, you know, the segue has kind of become the, the butt of, a, of, of jokes, right? And so, um, you know, I think it was even featured in a, in, in a mall cop movie as kind of a ridiculous thing, right? Uh, so what happened, right? So why did the segue fail? Well, you know, Dean came in, 
you know, I think before before this, he would con he considered himself an entrepreneur, but he didn't really follow the same the right kind of process, right? So what he did was that he thought of he thought of an idea. He thought of the idea for the segue. He's like, this is really cool, and so I'm gonna hype it up and I'm gonna sell it, and then you know, it's gonna change the world just because I wanted to, right? Just because he wanted to to be successful, he wanted to be rich, and he wanted to kind of sell these things and and you know be successful. Um, what he didn't realize was that the world wasn't really asking for a, uh, a segue. And so, it, and it, it wasn't really a need, right? Because if you, if you think about the specs for the segue, segue, it makes a lot of sense. Because, you know, if you, if you've ever seen one in reality, they're, they're pretty big and pretty bulky, right? And so if you were, if someone were to come riding one in class with you, they'd probably bang their head on the door and the segue might even, might, might not even fit through the door itself, right? So it's, it's, it's very bulky. So it's, it's very hard to kind of imagine people riding these on like a sidewalk. We hardly have enough room on our sidewalk for bikes, so so you know expecting segways to kind of be on the sidewalks like that is uh, um, you know just not really practical. And in fact, you know when it first came out, you know cities actually started banning these from their from their streets because you know they were such a nuisance, and you know pedestrians couldn't walk the walk couldn't, uh, couldn't walk the sidewalks, or bikers couldn't you know ride their bikes without you know without you know putting people in danger because of these segways. Um, but that said, so, you know, they're, they're too big and bulky for kind of pedestrian use, kind of moving around kind of smaller places, but it also wasn't big or fast enough or safe enough to actually go on the roads, right? So you would, you would never imagine someone driving this on like the freeway or even on the side streets, right? Just because they're too slow. And, and if you, if someone hits you, you know, in their car, then it's basically game over because there's no, there's no, there's no safety, no safety for you at all. So there really wasn't a place for it. And, and it's not like people were kind of asking for, for these to, to get around. And so what Dean Kamen kind of failed to do was that he failed to kind of observe the world and he failed to see, you know, there's not really a problem that the segue is, so is, is solving. You know, he just thought it was really cool. And so, you know, just by being really cool, or at least, you know, in your opinion, being really cool is, is not really enough to be successful as an entrepreneur. Um, so I think a lot of people kind of forget that. So, you know, when you're being an entrepreneur, you know, you have to really think about kind of what the world is, is like and and try to solve a problem, right? You may, you may not, you know, you may not invent something crazy like the internet, which is going to revolutionize everything, but you can still be successful. You can still make a positive impact on your, on your, through your work, you know, if you actually try to solve a real problem that people are having, right? Let's look at some positive uh, examples. So, um, so this right here is, is kind of the next generation wheelchair. Uh, so this, so these slides are getting a little bit old. And so I think we have to kind of update this a bit, but um, this wheelchair, um, you know, is, is kind of a, a big, bigger kind of version. Of this. But if you think about kind of the standard wheelchairs, there's a lot of drawbacks for, for people that, have, that are, um, you know, kind of uh, challenged with their mobility, right? So wheelchairs are very bulky, you know, most of them don't have a motor. And so it's very hard for them to go over rough terrain. Um, and because they have to be manually pushed either by the person themselves or by someone else, you know, it's, it's hard to travel kind of long distances with that wheelchair, right? And so it, it limited a lot of kind of opportunities that a lot of, uh, you know, uh, mobility challenge people could, uh, could really do. And so what these people did was that they tried to make a wheelchair to address all these issues. And so this wheelchair here is, uh, is motor is motorized. And so it has an electric motor. And so that kind of solved the issue of, of people having to you know, push these over long distances. And if you look at the tires here, you know, they're made of this kind of uh, material that's meant to be. Um, you know, you, you can be a little bit rough with it. So you can go over rough terrain, you can go over kind of muddy terrain or uneven sidewalks or uneven roads. Um, and this, and this wheelchair can do that. And I think there's even a shock, a shock system in here as well. Right. So, you know, it can really kind of go over rough terrain. So, um, so something like this, you know, it may, you know, if you, if you compare this, you know, it may not look as sleek as the Segway, right. It, in fact, you know, if you ask me, it, it looks kind of ugly <laughs> to, to an extent, uh, but this was actually a very successful product. And so, you know, I think, I think the exact numbers for this was that they were able to sell, um, I think, you know, 30,000 of these within their, their first year. Uh, and when you think about, you know, when you think about the audience or the, the amount of people that this would, uh, this would, you know, help, right. There's not, there's not, there's not nearly as many people in wheelchairs as there are just general people in general, right. The fact that this thing with a much smaller audience sold way more than the Segway in their first year Kind of shows you just you know if you take the entrepreneurship kind of process seriously you look at the world you try to find a problem you know you can be successful right you may not be famous you know you may not be the next kind of shark tank guy but you know you can at least make a positive impact and, and make a successful product right? 
another technology that's been really exciting lately, um, especially especially recently, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of interest in this is uh, 3D printing, um, and in particular 3D printing houses, right? Uh, so probably you know a lot of people are at least aware that there's there's a huge kind of housing crisis right now. You know there's not there's not really a lot of affordable housing out there, uh, and rents are going up like crazy. I don't not to mention real estate. So. Um, the big problem with this or a big um, challenge is that it's it's hard to build up houses. It takes a long time. It takes a lot of very specialized contractors and, you know, building codes and things like that. So to kind of build a house from scratch takes, you know, at the very, at the very least, you know, months, months of work. Uh, but what this company did was that they, they took the idea of a 3D printer and they scale it up to, to build houses. Um, and so with this technology, you know, you can get, you can get kind of the walls of a, of a house kind of down there within you know, maybe 72 hours or something like that. So you know, it's a much, much shorter time frame. And so this this is able to kind of build up houses in a much shorter time frame than traditional. Right? Um, so I think, you know, I think we're just kind of scratching the surface of this. I think, you know, this technology is being used kind of a lot more nowadays. Um, and I think we'll see a lot more of this kind of in the future as well. So another kind of example of, you know, someone, you know, taking something, uh, taking a problem that's out there in the world and using technology, using engineering to kind of find a solution rather than just, you know, coming up with something cool. All right, so the last thing that I'll, uh, the last example that I'll give here is a uh, bike helmet. So, um, you know, again, you know, not not the sexiest or not the not the most exciting piece of, uh, of, of product here, but if you look at this helmet, you know, it, it comes with this little console that you can, that you can, um, that you can uh, control, right? And if you notice on the sides of this helmet here, we have these lights, right? And so, you know, if you've ever biked on a main road or something, you know, um, you will know that your life is in danger all the time because the cars don't really care that you're out there. Um, so the idea with this helmet is to kind of give you a little bit of extra safety so that, you know, you can at least notify, you know, cars or pedestrians or other bikers kind of where you want to go. So essentially, this is like a turn signal for your bike and they just put it on your, on your helmet. Uh, so again, you know, not a very, you know, very, very simple idea. Um, you know, kind of like something that you kind of, that feels like you could kind of think up in like a, just like a, like an, like a, like a night, a nighttime session, um, but very successful. And I think solved a, a big issue with safety for, for bikers. And so, uh, you know, very, very kind of interesting product. Um, so, you know, then, and, you know, these are just kind of three examples here, but, you know, you can think of, you know, lots of other examples of products that have come out that, you know, maybe, maybe didn't make the news or maybe didn't, you know, become famous or didn't, you know, make the person a million dollars, but, you know, was still successful, you know, because they, they did, they, 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 they did the process of, you know, looking at the world, uh, finding out what problems are there and, and saying, you know, what, how can we solve this? What's the best way for us to, to solve this? Okay. All right. Any questions on, on this so far? Okay. All right. So entrepreneurship, you know, very, very important. And in fact, you know, people would say that's kind of the backbone of kind of innovation and human progress. Okay. Um, but, you know, the, the number one question that, you know, probably a lot of you have is that, you know, what if I don't want to start my own company, right? What if I don't want to, um, you know, make a product or, or make it rich or, you know, go through the problem? Because there's, um, you know, even if you, have, even if you have a great idea, even if you have a great product that, that can potentially help a lot of people and be successful, you know, there's a lot of risk. Right. And so there's a lot of risk with kind of starting your own company and um, and, uh, and and going through that whole process, because, you know, you probably have to borrow money for that and you know, get investors and things like that. Um, so, you know, I think I think, you know, probably the majority of people, you know, don't have don't really have an interest in starting their own company and just want to join a good company, you know, be one of the rank and file employees and and kind of make make your living through that. And that's fine. That's 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 you know, that's what the majority of people do. It's fine. But even so, you know, just this mindset of being able to think like an entrepreneur, you know, it can still be an asset for you um, and your employees. And so a lot of, you know, especially a lot of engineering companies are thinking of ways to kind of innovate and come up with new products uh, all the time. And so if you look at a company like Google, right, so Google is kind of a household name in, in engineering, right? Um, they're coming up with new products and kind of new services with, that, that they can provide all the time, right? And so even if you're just an employee of, of Google, you know, they're going to expect you to, you know, at least have some ideas or at least kind of be able to innovate and think of solutions. And so being able to think like an entrepreneur uh, can help like with that as well, right? You think of any big company, that, that, that that's true, right? Amazon, you know, very true, even, even in kind of the aerospace field. So even companies like Lockheed Martin, 
um, Boeing, Boeing needs a lot of help right now. They need a lot of innovation, but um, you know, so there's, there's, it can still be an asset. So, you know, even, even if it's not your primary duty to be an entrepreneur, to think of new solutions, it's still a good mindset to have. And it's, it's a good asset to kind of have in your pool. Okay. And so with that, you know, I, I did want to spend the majority of today uh, doing an activity. So I call this a three ideas activity. Um, so for everyone that's here in person, I do have kind of a handout for you. Um, so it is done in pairs. And so if you're, if you're sitting next to someone, you can pair up. It's good. Um, if you're on Zoom, uh, I'll put you guys in a, in a breakout room and, um, and, the, and the worksheet is on Canvas as well. But let me pass these out in person. Please. Does everyone grab a partner? Okay, in fact, you know, for people on Zoom, let me kind of uh, show you the, the worksheet just so you can see. So if you're if you're on Zoom, um, you can go ahead and go to the uh, Canvas site. And if you go to the page for week 10, um, there is a handout for you to do called the three ideas handout, right? So if you're on Zoom, go ahead and download it or at least kind of look at the questions. You can, you can, you can keep track of it on yourself, right? And so the idea with this activity is to kind of give you kind of give you an opportunity to see, you know, what it's like to be an entrepreneur, right? And so you're basically going to be performing an interview. So you're going to, you're going to interview your partner, right? You're going to ask them some things of like, you know, what do you like to think about? What problems do you see? Um, and then, you know, you're going to switch, right? So it's it's pretty kind of, uh, you know, self-explanatory and, and I'll kind of keep this up as well, right? And then based on the responses from your partner, you're going to go to the back of the handout and think of a, uh, think of a product, right? Think of three different products. Um, it doesn't have to be anything practical, right? And so it, it, you know, you don't have to think about, you know, how can this be made? How can it be manufactured? You know, this is all just kind of a brainstorming activity. And so if you look at the back of the handout, you know, there's there's entries for idea number one, idea number two, idea number three. Okay, so you're going to list those three ideas, and so uh, and then afterwards you're going to kind of, you know, see what your partner created for you, and then you can kind of rate them based on, you know, whether you like it, you don't like it, or you really really like it. And so the important thing for this activity is that remember you're not you're not creating a product or you're not creating an idea for yourself. You're doing it for your partner, right? So based on what they tell you in their interview, you know, think of something that can help them in their life. Okay. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and for the Zoom people here, I'm going to go ahead and split you guys into um, into breakout rooms. But if you're here in person, go ahead and partner up and start. So this activity usually takes around 30 minutes. And so, you know, I'll probably check in with you guys um, after that. Okay. Sure. On the worksheet, we're writing down what they like to think about. Exactly. What yeah. they, what yeah. they like. Whatever they respond to questions, will we write down on our paper? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think about music. All of okay, okay. And music and think of like what um, um, kind of your structure. Sure. I do that. I think the Thursdays and the Friday slot, and we're like, not. So we just yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. well, I had a bunch of like, what it called, but I was in choir, and I was like, right. Oh, nice. 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 Oh, nice
So people don't know how to talk openly to each other. People don't know how to talk to each other based off their own biases and based off of what they think is right about the end of truly being open to having real conversations with each other. You're just applying some sort of middle ground. That's what I mean, that's, that's, that's what we yeah. helps us get the solution. Yeah, so we can look better on the class there. That's good. Yeah. What do you wish is better? Faster or cheaper? Faster or cheaper? Bridges that actually stay up, I don't crush a boat. I think we need to go the other direction. <laughs> we need to slow down. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to make things better. Mm -hmm. Maybe we just need to put BRIs to P A T O N. Right. Okay. I thought so, but I don't want to like miss anything. Oh, that's so nice. So, uh, what way? I mean, there's no way to carry technology. I think it's more of a small Yeah. 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 What, what are we what are we really care about? I don't think I don't think speed and projected forward is really and is this run yeah. 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 yeah, And again, we just need to move on because I think we're trying to win it as well. Yeah. 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 I guess you put literally and well, it's more money for everybody. It makes inflation worse. <laughs> more money for you. Just me. Yeah, that's fine. But I don't know. more money. I don't know. I think it'd be more broad scale. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to sell this. All trash. 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 That's 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 the main thing. 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 So we'll make your life more comfortable for you to Okay, now I'm warm. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's just the game that I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just wanted to like this. Should I give you a $100 weight in yours? 
Probably putting towards groceries. Connect with the 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 Working on the work the on the the on the who says you can't have both? Yeah, that's the thing. We're on the That's what I was saying. Trash out of here. just a lot of them. I just have a little bit but they all have different ways of writing. Oh, but still, still, layers that is this true? Is getting better. It's gotten better after starting. What would you make your life more simple? What would you do? Yeah, that's just what would make your life more simple? Yeah. All right, if you guys haven't yet, you guys should be moving on. The second person should be interviewing the first person. What's only one question? Okay, I'll keep thinking about that, but let's do this. I'm a one pencil person. And it's so hot, you have to have the pencil for wood pencil people. So, yeah, okay. Let's see. Yes. Yeah. 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 I don't love the thing. I just want to I think I guess I didn't think we spend it on it. I was just saying, like, 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 you like to think about thoughts, like to like think about philosophy, you like to think about uh, and the future. No problems to see if you see what it is. I gave you a I think that was the last area. Also, my final half, but 
Oh, it's fantastic up there. I'm saying it's full. Dress from school. Magic wand. And how are we going to do one for? Well, this is the only one. I know that's not. All right, we still have we still have number five. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think you can do it better. Yeah, that's why I said I feel like I But it would help my life specifically. What would you make? I don't even know. No, I was thinking like never sign on well, like, that point. I would think you're like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. a like, gas car. Very hydro. Yeah. Hydro. Yeah. What are some of the other things? Yeah. yeah. Name the three things you're about. So the way that's most like the Based on your answer. Then Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what would make you like that? If we don't try to make things more safe, okay. Alright, I'm going to have some more. 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 I'm going to have some more
That's all you really want to talk about is just like die and like you're just sitting around these bricks. I know. Um, that's gonna be a scary thing. Okay. So we're going for safety. I can't spell it. Alright, okay. Okay, you said within the laws of physics, but how ambitious can it be? It could be ambitious as, as as long as it's like, yeah, as, as long as it's not like obviously not feasible or obviously not possible. So find obvious. Like, <laughs> I don't know, like a. <laughs> Like like a like a machine that prints money like that's uh I, I you know, know that's not practical or feasible. Okay. That's that's what I do for one of us. If somebody finds out, yeah, but yeah. Otherwise, like I could, I could physically have like the pictures come up. Yeah, they do, but you know, no, it wouldn't. Uh, phys it wouldn't. It wouldn't be a. Uh, try to be creative. I get no infinite energy sources or anything like that. No tesseracts, no vibranium, any of that, that stuff. So, that would be I want the roof. Have you seen the? This one's pretty. Yeah, that would be the robots. Because they all love Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Have you seen the one with the the freezer? No, I don't think so. The freezer, you opens it up, and there's like a whole civilization inside of it. No, I haven't. Oh my god, I, I want that. Well, like, yeah, they go through like a space stage and everything. No, I want that freezer. I just want that refrigerator. It's my house. That's a great episode. You should watch it. It's a, one of the few live action ones. Oh, okay. There's just going to be made. Actually, guys, it's a. Uh, uh, it's like all those bad ones. It's so many wires, Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's I know what he looks like. I forgot his name. Oh, yeah. so you put that for your magic hat. Yeah, but that's not really going to help. <laughs> it would change something in my life. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll put I'll put the trash for the bottom one, and then I'll take the bridge. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, it seems it seems that way. Okay, okay. What are you being a little cruel about? You know how that's all interesting. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't know if the ethics of that. Well, I would just observe. I can observe what they do. Who would they do? What you're like? Well, I think they bought the same thing. No, I wouldn't test. Like I wouldn't give them things to text. Yeah, they would just go through all the different sequences of sequences. I would I would yeah. accept yeah. That what works and what doesn't uh, work. See, that's changed the world. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's definitely ethical <laughs> then that's what I was saying. Exactly what you were talking about with the physical <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't watch this so I'm still telling my children, oh my god, I'm just, oh, just a good advice. Instead of like interviewing, you receive like right, you swipe right, you the guy But and then the boss would be cool. You can just have seen the first one. Yeah, you can see the first one. Yeah, you can see the first one. Is it a newer? Yeah, one? Yeah. No. And then yeah. what you probably have, have that, you I think I've seen all of them. Right. And then the 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 so like what yeah. 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 yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Right now, want yes. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not great, but you're it's right. Okay. This is what I got. Oh, I kind of asked it. Okay, we're just not realistic. Think we uh, it's happy realistic in our lifetime. Then you don't have to wait for a long time. Yeah, let's say let's let's say with today's technology. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Professor, I got a question. Sure. You know how in like the uh, USS Jill and Ford, they've got like the nuclear powered engine? Mm -hmm. How safe does that reactor have to be? You think of the logistics of a nuclear powered car. <laughs> right? But my, that's my one thing is like, am I going to be driving around like a like a pickup truck the size of like an excavator? <laughs> like that's, a, that's a great question. I don't know. I mean, uh, I mean, my, my impression is that it, it has to be pretty big. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's at the, I mean, today, it definitely it's not at the level of even on personal, personal automobiles, but I don't know, maybe someday, maybe someday it might be, but. So, just thinking about it, I'm like, uh, you know, I know, I know they do use it for like, I want like the submarines and yeah. the USS Joe for and yeah. all those yeah, big yeah. ships, uh -huh. but I just didn't know how big it had to be before you actually got any juice out of it. I think it's not that, I think it's more just safety, safety, safety stuff. Structure. Yeah. Oh, because like the extra walls. Exactly. Yeah. But if I remember correctly, doesn't the radiation basically all disappear the moment it's in water? Yeah, uh, the radiation has a really hard time going through the water. Yeah, but then but then you know you're carrying out a big water tank on a car too, and so you know. Don't crash. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's the other thing too. Yeah, other other yeah, not necessarily you, but other people. But yeah. Uh, yeah, they, I'm certain if you were driving around with a base sign saying warning radioactive, I think people would avoid you like the plane. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> people that could read you. You, you, you underestimate how uh any of us you can. Uh, industry. Yeah. Because you already have to like label if you're transporting hazardous waste. But it, what if the car itself is hazardous because of radioactive? Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, as long as you don't crash, you shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, generally, I think most people drive without the intent to crash. <laughs> Yet, accidents still happen. <laughs> I don't know. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Ruined the poor guy's uh... Not only him, but everyone around here, too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it would explode. Like, when you get a box. Yeah, yeah, but then the radiation would leave a long, a long, long term effects there too. So. Yeah, that would be the one you use that radiation leak after you get in a car accident. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hazmat squad coming to pick up the wreckage. <laughs> 
All right, guys, we'll wrap we'll wrap it up in about maybe five more minutes. So there's a little bit there's a little bit more after this. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, your fancy and named it. The, the Public Transportation Regulation Association mm -hmm. doesn't flow off the top of your head. It's a company that produces products and enforces safety regulations yeah. for public transportation. Uh, you could buy two. No, that's crazy. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah. so, oh, it's like that. So, CEO of this company, and, uh, you don't have to make <laughs> the trains, you don't have to make whatever. But what you do is you collaborate with those companies to make sure of safety regulations, like the doors, the seating, like the tracks, the, even the, the station where people are supposed to like maybe guarded rooms. To the yeah, you can produce products for it. But why not buy it in your team, for your separate zones, and everything? Okay. 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 That's all yeah. you have a system? Why? Like, all your so, like, you know, you have your system. You're not the one who. The only thing is, like, like, I guess you can hold your kid you want, but you're not the one who, like, instead of just letting it go separate. The rest of the it's like the I don't think it's a bigger like, oh, same thing on the trash. Right, you know, I'm like, let go. Because the system is like, I'm thinking about it. I'm not 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 Sewer. Yeah. Well, that's, right now, rollback is more fun. Obviously, when it gives you sewer, it's crash. Crash loops are super good. I don't want to have it fucking complex. But that's what you're saying. You have to like take your own different area to do it. Whereas, like, the first class of the toy. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, any of your versus like walking down the hall. Or like taking the crash out to the garbage and then putting it on the street and then you're actually going to take the garbage truck out. You're just saying, like, you're going to be like the system's just like the whole city. Not just like one building. You're just like one building. Okay, I started by. I don't know how we do that, but. Uh, no, it doesn't have to be. All right, let's bring it back. So there's a couple, a few, few things I want to talk about before we come. I guess we'll give, we'll give, we'll give the Zoom people 60 seconds to come back. But, um, all right. So if you're finishing up right now, you guys have six, 60 more seconds.
All right. Okay. Looks like everyone's back. Okay. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, you know, kind of a little fun activity. Um, so I guess let's let's do a little debriefing. So you know, you guys you know you spent the last like half hour kind of interviewing your partner and kind of seeing what they they like and coming up with ideas for them. Um, so out of the three ideas, you know, was there anyone out there that uh, that didn't like any of the ideas that their their partner made for them? Their partner was a terrible entrepreneur. <laughs> Good, good. Okay, so you guys, you guys liked at least one idea, which is good. Anyone want to share any uh, any particularly creative ideas that uh, that their partner either made, or maybe you're really proud of your own your your own idea? You want to share that too? All right, we're all chilling until spring break. All right, sounds good. But but hopefully you know hopefully you guys enjoyed that. You know it's uh you know. This is kind of a small, I mean, of course, you know, this, this is, we're just doing this for one lecture. So of course it's just kind of one, um, you know, just for half an hour, but in reality, you know, this, this, this kind of process of, you know, talking to people, getting to know audience, you know, this, this, this takes place over kind of a long period of time. Um, and so for the rest of class today, you know, I, I wanted to kind of talk about kind of, you know, um, you know, what, what kind of professional entrepreneurs do or what, what companies kind of just do in general uh, to kind of get information about these things to come up with new products uh, all the time. Okay. But, you know, hopefully, you know, the, the upside or kind of the, uh, um, the, the bottom line that I, I hope to leave you guys with today is that, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they're, they're they should be problem solvers. Right. Um, and I think that's, that's probably an image or that's probably a, a, a perception that you may not be, uh, that you may not associate with entrepreneurs because you think of entrepreneurs as very kind of flamboyant personalities, these like very savvy businessmen that created something, you know, created something that the world didn't know they needed, right? And so that's, but in reality, you know, the world did need a lot of things that they created. They just, you know, uh, they just, they they just, they kind of, part of, part of being an op entrepreneur is kind of, you know, selling yourself and making yourself seem mystical and kind of, you know, uh, more uh, ambivalent than it is. But, you know, in reality, you know, they, they kind of knew exactly what they were doing so um so you know key the key to any kind of product or any kind of successful company or anything like that is to understand your customers understand their worldview and see what's something that they could help that could help them right now okay so you may be wondering you know what you know what are some things that you can do right now right because because you know uh, you know maybe maybe you have an idea for a company right now that you want to take to market or maybe you are interested in learning more right um, and so one way that you can kind of uh, keep in touch or kind of, you know, stay, stay in tune with these things is to kind of, you know, keep your finger on the pulse. And so there's, you know, we live in kind of the age of kind of mass information nowadays. You know, a lot of things are available to us on at the, at the, at our fingertips on our phones and our computers. So there's a lot of articles that you can read online. There's a lot of, you know, business uh, magazines that you can read about kind of trends, right? Uh, there's a lot of podcasts that you can uh, that you can uh, listen to a lot of industry specific trends that you know are are, are done there, um, and people post a lot of stuff on on social media too. You know, people share a lot of things on social media. So you know if you if you you know if if you are able to kind of comb through and sift through a lot of you know um, social media posts in terms of what people are, are kind of paying attention to, what are their kind of worries and stuff, then you can um, you know you can kind of get a sense of kind of what's what are the issues in the world. Okay. Um, and so the next tip is to pay attention to what your customers are saying. And, uh, you know, if you, if you're currently working for a company, you know, how, what, what they're saying about your product and service that you already have in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in market. Right. And so there's a couple of ways that you can do this. And so, you know, kind of the most direct way of course, is to talk to them directly. Right. So basically kind of do exactly what you did just now, just, uh, you know, consumer interviews, you know, customer interviews, things like that. All right. Uh, there's also surveys. And so you probably, you know, we live in the age of, you know, endless surveys. So you guys are probably sick of surveys. I'm, I'm sick of surveys too, but you know, those, those surveys all serve a purpose. And so those, those surveys serve to, you know, get information from, you know, your audience, get information from people in terms of what they want and what's most important to them. Uh, but you can also kind of indirectly kind of see, uh, what they're saying as well, just by reading what they say online. Um, usually people are pretty honest on their Amazon reviews. So that's, that's a good place to start too, uh, or on their social media posts too. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a bit more about interviewing customers. So, you know, when you interview customers, you know, there's, there's a few different kind of categories of questions of, of, of what you can ask, right? 
And so the first hand, you know, you can you can try to ask questions of, you know, try to understand how they use your, your product, right? Uh, which seems like kind of a kind of a silly question to ask, right? Uh, but you'd be surprised because you know you put, you know, let's say that you're in a position where you you're you you put a you put a product on the market and you start selling it to people, um, and it's meant to be used in a certain way, right? Um, but you know, you'd be surprised at how people either misuse it or they, or in the best case, they can think of creative ways to use your product as well, right? Because uh, a lot of times, you know, maybe they're, they're, maybe they're finding issues because they're just not using it correctly, right? Uh, so kind of just, uh, you know, getting, asking questions of, you know, asking people to walk you through the process of using something or how do you do certain things or where do you use this product or when do you last use it, right? Very basic questions that, you know, I think some people think are just, you know, too basic, but, you know, they're important. And I think you'd be surprised at you know how the different ways that people use your your, your thing. Um, I have some experience with this because I, I I I put out a service you know as, as kind of part of my research, and I'm uh, surprised all the time at how people. Um, first of all, uh, the fact that people ignore the instructions and ignore the documentation, and they kind of do things, they run into problems. Uh, but second of all, you know even if they do read the instructions, you know there's there's some gaps in logic, or there's some things that I don't think about that people you know, either have questions for, or they just kind of assume something wrongly. And that's something that I need to add to the documentation as well. So, you know, even if you think, you know, your product is fairly obvious or fairly easy to, uh, to use, um, you know, asking people how they use it, you don't, you'll, you know, you, it's, I think that's the thing that surprises people the most, right? Uh, even something simple like a bicycle, you'll be surprised at what people use this for. Okay. The next stage of questions is to ask what problems they so, you know, if they're having issues with your product or if they're having issues with a certain type of uh, thing, you know, just ask them directly, you know, what kinds of uh, uh, problems did you find? What, what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? What was frustrating, right? Uh, asking those kinds of questions can kind of, you know, of course, kind of highlight those things uh, to you, okay? And for those and for those cases where they are having problems, you know, people come up with solutions, okay? So that they're not connected to a customer service rep all the time, uh, but, you know, they need to use their, their water heater for this. Uh, but if they if they don't have time to call a plumber, right? You know, asking them how did they solve this? How did they fix their water heater? How did they get it to work for their family, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe they're doing something creative that you can you can utilize in, in, in your uh, uh, in your design process, uh, or maybe they're doing something really dangerous that they need to stop, right? And so, uh, you know, these are these are the types of questions that you can ask to you know really get the most information from the customers as much as possible. Okay. All right, tip number three. Um, tip number three is to do, um, lots of prototyping, right? So if you're, if you're in a, if you're in a company where, you know, you're, you're in charge of developing a new product, whether it be an app or whether it be something physical, right? Uh, all of you guys here are, are going to take senior design at, at some point, maybe you're in senior design right now, right? Probably something that your senior design instructors are going to tell you is that, you know, make, make prototypes. Uh, so test it out, right? And so it's, you I think the the fallacy that I think a lot of people have is that you know when you're developing something new, you have an image or you have kind of a a vision in your head of exactly how it's going to work out, right? But the percentage the percentage of times of how things work out in your head versus how they actually work out in reality is very small. I say probably only like five percent of the time. So things that you think in your head actually turns out in reality. So uh, and because a lot of times you know you don't really know what issues are going to show up until you actually make it, right? You actually create something, you test it out. You put it in front of customers, right? And so being able to create prototypes, you know, oftentimes very simple prototypes is very, it's very important process, you know, not only for entrepreneurship, but also just design in general, right? So even something simple like a website or maybe like a computer rendering, like a CAD model, or maybe just like a PowerPoint deck, a video, right? Uh, rendering, or maybe, you know, you take an existing object and you modify it to based on something that you, that you're doing, right? Being able to prototype something so that you so that you know you, you never want your first prototype to be your final your final product, right? You always want to try at least you know three or four or five prototypes along the way, so that you kind of you know get a sense of kind of what the pain points are going to be you know before you actually make the final. Because if you're not if you're not constructing if you're not kind of building anything till the end, you know you're gonna you're just you're just kind of asking for trouble, right? You're asking to be a segment. Basically. Okay. Um, tip number four is to seek uh, feedback or from uh, potential customers. So maybe maybe people that is not directly in your target audience, but maybe some people that could benefit from your 
uh, from your work, right? So finding, asking questions on on social media like Reddit or something like that, right? Or creating ads on Facebook to get some information to get the word out, right? Um, or you know maybe maybe you go to where your customers are, maybe like a trade show, like you know, or like a dog park. Maybe you're making a, an invention for dogs, right? Um, uh, trying to get trying to get as much information as you can because the more you learn about your your customers, the more you learn about your potential customers, you know, your the more successful your product is going to be. Okay. okay. And so the last thing that I'll I'll end you with is, you know, how can you, you know, and this Zoom thing is so annoying, but you know, how can you kind of explore an entrepreneurship thinking now, right? As a student. Because a lot of a lot of the tips I just gave you, you know, are mostly kind of relevant for industry professionals. But really, there's kind of a lot that you can do right now to, uh, um, you know, to kind of further your education. And so the first thing that you can do, you know, come to this workshop, which you did. So that's good, right? Um, there is a lot of kind of events and guest talks and panels that are offered by the business school and the Center for Entrepreneurship. So definitely keep an eye out for for those. Okay? So there is a there's a hyperlink here. Um, and these slides are posted online too. So if you're interested in kind of checking these out later, you can look at the slides there. Okay. Uh, there are entrepreneurship courses that you can take through the business school. So we have management 465A and 465B. Okay. So that has, that has to do with new venture creation and new venture launch. Um, and so, you know, these are not, obviously these are not part of the engineering curriculum, you know, but if you are a mechanical engineering student, there is a way for to count one of these courses as one of your technical so if you're interested in that, you can definitely talk to me after class about that. Okay. Um, next thing is to kind of incorporate entrepreneurship thinking into your other courses. So, you know, for those of you who are going to be taking senior design next year, you know, this is definitely a good slide deck to kind of keep in mind, right? Um, you're going to be practicing it very, very soon. Okay. Um, or you can send uh, an email to uh, Dr. Atul. So uh, so Dr. Atul uh, Tekshindani, he is a professor in the business school. But he is working directly with the engineering college to provide these kinds of opportunities for you guys. And so he's actually the author of these slides. And so you might take no credit for this activity. This is all kind of good stuff. So, you know, if you're interested in kind of learning more about it and, and kind of seeing what opportunities that you could have with him, um, I would definitely shoot him an email and ask him about that. Okay. All right. Any questions? Um, I think that's the last slide. Yep. Any questions on just anything that we talked about today or just any any kind of entrepreneurship opportunities? Okay. All right. So that's all I got planned for today. So, you know, again, you know, today was just kind of a fun day. It's the last day before spring break. I uh, hope you guys all have a great spring break. So rest up, you know, um, you know, catch up on sleep, you know, you know, get physically well, because, you know, after the spring break, it's going to get busy. So, uh, so thank you guys. Uh, thank you guys for, uh, uh, for being a great class so far in the, for the past 10 weeks. Uh, have a great spring break and I will see you guys in a week and a half. Thanks, sir. Have a great you guys good one professor thank you i was gonna say you should yeah. keep that i at least wanted to take a picture of it yeah well i, I want to find it to be honest so yeah we oh so, my god yeah i can do that if we switch back uh, yeah. 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 no this is better yes you do that's a great idea. That's actually I've seen it's something. Like, well, I've seen something like it, but it ended up not really working that well. So that's a great idea. Uh, I guess it could be enough, but you would have to be if you like.